promise each other this is woman yeah. first of all he wasn't the first body i saw up there okay he was the third dead body that i saw i saw other two dead climbers who actually died the night before of after three long months of expedition this is seventy thousand dollar expedition task if you want we're not going up and he said I want to go up and he angry with me I pay you a lot of money for you also uh. and your company uh. and people just want to reach the summit you know this area above 7800 meters there's a line an invisible line above this line it's called the death zone the body cannot acclimatize anymore to the to the lower um, to the low oxygen levels over there. Um, when you go inside death zone, you know that you are on your own. Groups that usually get roped up between people, they, they detach the ropes and just, because even if you are in a group of 10 climbers, it's enough for only to, for one to fall to take all the other knives with him. So you get unroped from your fellow climbers and you just, you're on your own up there. So you, you wear a down suit, which is a few kilos, uh, two masks on your head, and you have the oxygen mask, and you have the goggles, and you have only one small fading headlamp on your hand, on, on your head, on your forehead. And then I saw, I saw my third dead body, and and I touched it, and and he was alive. And I knew this was a game changer because because I touched both of the other dead bodies and they weren't alive. So I take this option. So if I go up, a person's life will be lost. And if I go down with him, not only do I lose my summit, I might even lose the chance of going back home at all. And I cursed and I just attached him to my harness and I just he saw me first, he saw me first. Mo, I saw. I go fast and I lighting. Uh -huh. And you are yellow down suit, I see. Uh -huh. And you hanging in the old rope, not a new rope. Not, uh, not old rope. Behind the rope. Behind the rope. Behind the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little five meters behind. Well, five meters behind. Yeah. yeah, and you broke everything. You ice here, all here. Uh, ice, ice. And I wake up, hey, guy. Behind and, you, you and, come uh, and then you say, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, huh? Yeah, wake yeah. up, wake up. And after, yeah. when I look the light and I take a uh, white rope, Ha, ha, ha. Golden rope, old rope. Ha, ha. I cut it, I take out my knife yeah. and cut it and I catch your, connect your harness, you, your yeah. harness also yeah. broke. Yeah. Those loose situation going up, going down, you don't really think up there because the oxygen levels are too low, your cognitive abilities are just zero up there, so I cannot really take credit for that decision. I served in the military, the Israeli military for three years as a commander and over there, you are being told to never leave a friend behind. I don't know if I thought about it over there inside the death zone at the same night of the 19th of May 2012, but maybe, maybe it's inside me, you know, just like that. Two weeks ago, I still had, I still wore a glove on my hand for the last 10 months. Uh, I had many surgeries in my hand and it was frostbitten very badly because during the rescue I needed to remove one of the gloves. The most warming glove, it's like a baking glove, all the fingers are like connected together so you cannot do technical things with your fingers so I needed to remove it and maybe one hour later it was totally frozen. We're discussing for this season. We have for down Eden and it's in Adap say, I know, I want to go up summit. And I say, your finger is too cold, yeah? Hmm. You have, and Nadav is cold, cold every time, crying. And I say, this is danger for you also, and Eden also, for me also. Even you have a frost fight, and we will, whole night we walk. You have also very frost fight, old finger, and uh, uh, put finger, and you also die. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome mountain climber, photographer, and Israeli Presidential Medal of Honor recipient, Nadav Ben Yehuda.
When you climb, you are alone. Extreme altitude mountain climbing is ultimately about how long your body will accept the abuse from your own mind. You look up, full of purpose and self-control. But the higher you get, the more you become filled with confusion and, and hopelessness, trying desperately to keep from falling apart. The only thing that stands between you and death is yourself, your wits, your preparation, your mental and physical strength. In this almost airless void, no one lasts long. It's not just that there is insufficient air. There is also too little human warmth, too little sense. As I anticipate reaching a summit, I do not look ahead, because I don't want to know how far I have left to go. Every 10 or 15 steps, I collapse to the ice to rest, then crawl on again. No matter who you are on a mountaintop, sometimes even your best is simply not good enough, especially when your goal is to touch the top of the world. This past May, I set out to climb Mount Everest, all 29,029 feet of it. I was about to be the youngest Israeli ever to reach the summit. After three months of climbing, my goal was within reach. On the night of the summit, your whole existence boils down to only two tasks, breathing and climbing harder than you have ever climbed before. It happened during the last few hours of the climb. It was dark. The wind was deafening. It was more than 70 degrees below zero. My face was covered with two layers of insulation, goggles, and an oxygen mask. I held only a small fading headlamp to light my way. I was 900 feet from the peak, not much longer. Summit, but you cannot summit. And this here to summit is around nine hours. From the uh, base camp, I mean the 4, camp. 4,000 meter. 4,000 meter. <laughs> it's a very slow walk. And even we oh, go. You mean the, where, you, where we were, like 8,400? Yeah, it will take him another yeah. eight hours to eight, go up. Eight, nine hours. Yeah. And I say the more difficult part up there, Hillary Step, South Summit, is more difficult part. Really? I felt as if I could reach out and touch it. Then I saw something lying inside a crack in the ice. My eyes were tired and my body weak, but I knew it was a person. He was unconscious, gloveless, without oxygen. In these conditions, no one can survive up there. It was a game changer. I had, and I had to make a decision. This is a lose-lose situation. If I choose to go up to the summit, a person's life will be lost. And if I choose to go down with him, not only do I lose my summit, I also might lose the chance of going back home. Suddenly, climbing up to the summit is the safer way. I took off my gloves and attached the man to my harness. During the descent, my oxygen mask broke, and my right hand became paralyzed because of the severe frostbite. To tell you the truth, I thought we would never make it. I thought we would stay on that mountain forever. Yes, 45, it's very 50 windy. speed, yeah. and with the storm, and I say, this is very dangerous weather. You are also not strong, you have very cold, and your finger, I take out his glove and I warming his finger. Uh -huh. And he's, oh, Pemba, don't touch, I pain. Yeah? Uh -huh. And I say, we're not going up. And he say, I want to go up. And he angry with me, I pay you a lot of money. For it took eight hours to carry him down to the closest camp. Not to carry, this is impossible no. not to carry yeah. people in the... In the, that, that high, yeah? No, rescue also, he cannot rescue. No, no. His health doesn't help me. He's, he's frostbite already. His finger is too cold. He's too going cold. Uh, before and after between you and you handle me for my connect to rope. I handle yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, without a doubt, the longest and most painful eight hours of my life. Uh, five hours. Hmm, five hours. Well, from there, 11.30 we start down. I have a watch, I'm looking watch. 11.30? Yeah. It took two more hours, two more days, sorry to reach an ice plateau where a rescue helicopter could land. 
But we survived. We both survived. Hope. Hope gave me the strength to move on, even during the darkest hours. When you are that high on Mount Everest, you are no longer in Nepal or Tibet. You are in outer space. And no matter how hard you cry out, no one will come for you. You are truly alone. As a country surrounded by enemies, alone is a feeling we Israelis understand all too well. Yet, Israel, even during our most difficult times, instinctively responds when others are in need, whether it's a tsunami in Thailand or an earthquake in Haiti. The Jewish state, like the United States, is often among the first to step up and show up. In the IDF, you are told to never leave a man behind. He's a liar, man. He's a, like a, he's a, he won a hero, but he's, he not, this is not true. No. He cannot walk. His finger is already frostbite. Before, before he's already frost. frostbite. He is a, he is a frostbite, it's island peak also. When island peak, we climb before Everest. Uh -huh. It's 6,175 uh -huh. meters island uh -huh. peak. And we're going to high camp. We are very cold and we back. And other day, we, uh, two times we try Island Peak and after summit. Hey, yeah. take a time. And I say, you cannot summit Everest. You cannot go 6,000 peak also, you frostbite, cold, <laughs> your yeah. finger is, you cannot reach the Everest summit. And after, he is very slow and he angry with me every time. I say, you are slow, but you tall, you are very slow. And he angry and he's, he, I'm told, I have a lot of experience in the mountain, how is my clients walk. And we took one day one uh, two bell hour from base camp to camp too. Oh, yeah. This is very long. Yeah. From Israeli embassy and talk talk love. And after they call me. Uh, what did they say? And they say where well, you rescue and not have rescue from Turkey sky. Uh -huh. And I say no, it's we are help them for rest Turkey sky. For you down. I say, not I call your embassy. Where they, they call get, you. Where they get my number? And they call my Tamsaku and my name after they didn't get my number. <laughs> and after one day, he have an interview from Nepali newspaper, Himalayan Times. <laughs> and they write it, I carry Turkish guy, I carry rest, American Turkish guy rescue. You or Nadav, uh, Nadav, Nadav, Nadav. Nadav Yehuda, not to put my name in Nadav Yehuda, carry down, he have a training Israel. Army? Army. But the in Nepal is army very strong. But Nepali army also cannot rescue for 8,000 meters. People don't carry. And uh, Nadav Ehuda carry one oxygen. I carry five bottles of oxygen, carry up for summit day. I pull down two times and uh, after my bag is pain, I go to the hospital in Kathmandu also. Huh. And after the after I call from Israeli ambassador, where you put the, this newspaper? And they told me, you share a Pemba, you fucking guy, fucking Sherpa. Fucker Sherpa, you don't understand our uh, system. What Israeli says? Yeah. And I say, okay, okay. I have not big news. This is okay. I'm, I don't talk from this. You scared? I am scared. As Israelis and Americans, this is simply who we are. We value life, we value living, and we value each other. Could any of us just walk past a dying man? I don't think so. My name is Nadav Ben Yehuda. I am an Israeli, and I look up. Thank you. Angry with me, not so talking. Even we talk from uh, help you, he didn't like it me. Huh. And after he told me, that night I pictured my, uh, my camera, I took picture, Nadav is angry with me. Huh. And after, when we back to Kathmandu, after he see my camera picture, and after he say me, copy your picture. Huh. If not copy picture, I didn't give you a bonus, huh. uh, 14 on the dollar. Huh. And I say, it's, for me it's big money, it's 14 on the dollar, when I hard job.